let's look at a little bit of quick, simple antler repair. Putting the gloves on, we're going to be using some glues. Well, actually one glue. It's Gorilla Glue. No, I don't own any of the factory or any stock. It'd be nice if I did, though. This stuff's kind of expensive. But uh, right here, I want you to take a good look at uh, the set of antlers. It was brought in to us. It was originally covered in velvet, and the uh, individual brought it to us. He let it lay around for about two weeks in his garage. Apparently, this here was a deer that was killed on this property. Uh, I don't know if it was hit by a car and went over there and died, or a uh, individual shot it out of season, or what the deal was. But make a long story short, uh, he didn't want to see anything else go to waste, and uh, he brought it to us uh, two weeks after it happened. So everything rotted. It was a stinking mess. So we pulled off most all of the velvet, and we burned off. Uh, what little bit of hairs that were on here. Now we got to come back and strip off a little bit more velvet and then we can go ahead and uh, start the coloring process. But what we're going to talk about here today is uh, basic simple antler tip repair. I say tip but in reality you can actually do this with the whole beam of antler if you had to. Now this is one tip it came off here. Incidentally, this is here a mule deer, Colorado mule deer. So what I did earlier was, this is the part here that was broken. Uh, apparently when the deer fell over or whatever, this is, was a pressure break. Big chunk here that, uh, kind of hard for the video maybe, that's missing. And here I had to grind this down a little bit because of the way it protruded out and bent over and dried. And uh, you have to make sure everything fits back right the way you want. Now, I chose to use Gorilla Glue because it expands when it dries. The thing about using Gorilla Glue, the secret I should say, is that everything's got to be wet when you go to put it together. So we're going to use plain old water. And what I did was, now these antlers, like I said, these here are some terrific mule deer antlers. I've got to tell you this here. And uh, at the first part of this video, I put a few pictures in there of what this deer looked like alive. But again, instead of letting everything go to waste, uh, the individual brought these in, and uh, here they are. Too bad we couldn't save them in velvet. They were too far gone and rotten. But what I did was, Went ahead and took a drill, appropriate drill bit size, drilled a hole roughly about three inches in. Now, I had to be careful that I didn't drill through another part of the antler. Now, on the tip that was broken, drilled a hole in there. Now, I took a screw where you can go ahead and use square tubing steel stock, a nail, or something else. The reason why I chose a screw was because you have these ridges that will adhere to any type of hard material that clings to it. And the screw head I ground down with a grinder to go ahead and fit into the hole. See, it's going to fit like this. Squirt glue in there. Now, this here is, again, expanding glue. It's a special type of uh, glue. And what I'm going to do now, go ahead and put glue in there, run some tape around here to hold it, and then that glue is going to expand. I'm going to let that dry, pull the tape off, come back, sandpaper this down, get everything looking just right, all the contours, everything looking just right so you can't tell it. Then I can come back and go ahead and color it. So that's what I'm going to have to do here. Now, it's a simple process. Now, you use the appropriate size uh, connections, fasteners, screws, nails, tubes, or whatever it is, depending upon the size of antler that you're working with. The procedure you see here uh, will vary. Uh, with the size of the antler. For example, if this was a main beam, we would have to use possibly a double or triple 
whole setup with triple pegs going down for strength. Now, Gorilla Glue is just my glue of choice for this particular job. There's plenty of other epoxies and glues and whatnot on the markets that you can go ahead and use. Uh, this here seems to work and I've used it before so this is what we're going to do. So now basically what I'm going to do here take this. The reason why I have gloves on is because you do not want to get any of this here on your hands. Alright, I'm going to squirt some glue in there. Now well, I squirt a whole bunch in there. Let me go ahead and get a little bit of water. Let me get a little bit of, where's that piece at right here? There it is. Got up and walked away. I want to put a little bit of water in there. Shake that out. It's not really a big deal, but the water is the activator I found out on this. I want to put some glue in here. And again, this here expands. It foams out. And that's going to be good because it's going to help fill these ridges that I can go ahead, like I said before, come back and sandpaper that down, blend all of that in. Then I can go ahead and use my epoxy modeling compounds, come back and model all this here, get everything look good, then we can go ahead and color the antlers and proceed with an antler mount. That's what the individual wanted on here. So, I'm going to go ahead and put this all around not only down there in the hole in the crevice, I'm going to put it around this area here because once this expands it's going to fill up these cracks and it's just going to make my job a little bit easier. Now if you're working with a set of antlers that do not need to be stained and uh, they have good color to them, you got to be a little bit careful because you don't want to go ahead and, and ruin it where you uh, get too much glue foaming out and then you have to come back and sandpaper everything down then before you know it you have to restain the whole thing. So, But in this particular case here I'm not too worried about it because this is exactly what needs to be done. It all needs to be stained. Again, now I'm just squirting a little bit more in there. Sometimes I use too much but that's my fault. Now I have that in there one piece here I had to shave down. Now, go ahead and check this, see how that's going to work. Because I know once this starts, it's really going to set up. See, now I kind of think this may not foam up that much, so I'll put a little bit extra in there. I'd just rather be safe than sorry. Have a really concrete hold on there so to speak. But this Gorilla Glue seems to work for a variety of different things. So, alright. Now, and the whole idea to have a piece of metal in here is to give it the strength, the holding power. Because you could actually glue a piece on here. Oh, well, it's great. It's really great. But then you come up and you hit it and you knock it off. But it's not going to happen this way. Because what this particular glue is going to do is going to expand, fill up any crevices, and just lock down real tight. Again, it's going to squirt out here, foam out there. So I'm going to got that on there. Get a piece of a duct tape or any other suitable tape that you have. Put that around there to hold it in place. Now, I'll let that stay there all oh, probably two hours. Come back, pull the tape off, get busy, evening everything out, blending it in, getting some more uh, sculpting compound, actually the epoxies, take care of that piece that's missing, coming back, and then uh, do a few more things to these antlers, then it would be ready to go ahead and start staining. But this here is one heck of a trophy mule deer. I'll tell you what, something like this here, 
<laughs> Anyone ought to be satisfied shooting something this big. That's how you do it. Simple antler repair. You can use this on any set of antlers. You just have to modify uh, different things uh, depending upon the size of the antlers that you're working with. And that's it. That's all we got for today. I told you it's going to be quick.